From Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors, Red Hat and Cisco. Now here are your hosts, Brian Grace Lee and John Walls. And welcome back inside the Austin Convention Center here as we continue our coverage here on theCUBE of the OpenStack Summit 2016. Uh, we are live here on day three. And IBM is a, uh, a solid contributor, a key contributor to the OpenStack community on the platform sponsorship level. And it's a pleasure to welcome Jason McGee from IBM, who is an IBM fellow and also the CTO and Vice President of IBM Cloud Platform. And, uh, and television star too, we might say. Jason, uh, <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you for being with us. We yeah, certainly appreciate that. We'll get into the TV spot in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> First, tell, tell us about just your, your week, uh, your focus here and what you've been able to get done and, and kind of how you feel about the way this community has really expanded, yeah. uh, almost exploded, you might say, in the past five, six years. Yeah, so, so we love this week. I mean, as you know, IBM's a, a big contributor to and supporter of OpenStack. It's key to our strategy around cloud. Um, you know, we're building our, uh, our entire cloud platform on top of OpenStack, so this is an important week for us. We have uh, a big team that uh, are key contributors and technical leads on major projects within OpenStack. This is an important week to uh, have them come, meet the community, figure out what the next steps are for OpenStack and the technical work we're going to go do. Uh, this is also a big uh, client event, so we spend a lot of time you know, with clients and with other partners and, and uh, kind of talking about the evolution of OpenStack. Um, I think the growth has been tremendous. I mean, obviously, um, over the last few years, um, an event like this has not only grown in physical size, but really changed in makeup from in kind of the early days of the foundation where uh, it was mostly the, the people participating in the project, getting together to meet and talk about where to go, to an event that is now, I think, a great blend between users and, and contributors and vendors who are really coming together to, to understand how to bring cloud forward. So I think it's, you know, it's been a great week uh, so far and uh, some really great conversations. So yeah. how's that changed the nature of your work then? Or the nature of the, maybe the work of the community at large then? Because um, there has been this evolution of, of maybe the, the structure of the organization and then of the, the meetings, uh, what's happened here in terms of different releases and different projects and all of a sudden you see this maturation kind of occurring, right? People are yeah. growing up a little bit. Yeah. So how's that changed things at IBM, you think? Well, I think, it I think there's a couple of interesting dimensions there. I mean, one is I see a real maturity happening in OpenStack and I think you see that in the event this week. You know, a lot of stories about clients in production, large scale deployments, operational focus. I think within the working groups there's been much more focus on how do you actually operate this platform and how do you build the right kind of operational tools, uh, which is a sign of, of people really using it, right? So we're beyond the uh, what does it do and into the how do I run this efficiently and operate it. That's important for us in IBM. You know, we're running OpenStack at very large scale, mm -hmm. um, both for our public cloud and for you know, dedicated and on-premise environments. Um, so I like that focus. I think that maturity is good. Um, the other thing which I think is quite apparent this week is um, the role of OpenStack is starting to get kind of better understood within the broader landscape of cloud. You know, um, I did a talk yesterday uh, as part of uh, our IBM day uh, where I talked about kind of the overall cloud stack that we're building, mm -hmm. right? From infrastructure through platform services with containers and into you know, domain services like Watson and video. Um, and I think in the industry overall, you see you know, a, a more mature conversation about the role that infrastructure with OpenStack plays and how it relates to Kubernetes and Docker and container technologies. And I think that's good. You know, it feels like we're getting uh, into a better place where we're not all just trying to solve all the same problems. Yeah. Right? And we kind of understand uh, how these different communities can play off with each other. Yeah, IBM's obviously been involved with, with open source for a very long time. It's, it's kind of new and cool for, for some of the other vendors in the industry yeah. to go, hey, we now do open source, or we're contributing. How important do you find, when you talk to your customers that they go, you not only understand the technology, but you understand the process. We can, we can lean on you to help us. Because yeah. I mean, we're seeing you know, as much customers using, you know, sort of consuming open source, but now they're contributing, which is yeah. you know, kind of a crazy phenomenon. But yeah, yeah, it's a great point. I mean, in fact, we have those conversations all the time with our clients yeah. about um, you know, not only what are we doing in open source, but how do we help them right. uh, participate. Uh, you know, one of the roles I think IBM has played a lot in recent years is helping uh, different open source communities um, move towards the proper governance models. You know, we, we helped create the OpenStack Foundation, we helped create the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Uh, we're doing some of the same things with CNCF and, and OCI in the container space. You know, it's how do we take that experience that we've had with how to do governance and contribution around open source and help 
the communities move forward. Uh, for clients, you know, we've done things like uh, we released this thing called the uh, Blue Mix Garage Method, which was a way that we actually documented kind of how we do development internally in IBM, how we transformed ourselves. And we documented that so clients could kind of take advantage of those same techniques and tools and kind of learn how to, yeah. how to contribute. So we think that's that's a pretty important role that we can play with our clients for yeah. sure. And the, and the Bluemix garages are great. I mean, there's, uh, there's probably about a half dozen or, or 10 yep. now. It's it's a really open place. You go in, you bring a problem. There's a bunch of experts there to help you actually yeah. write code. And, Absolutely. Um, we were at IBM Interconnect a few, eh, about a month and a half ago, whenever it was. Uh, one of the things that, that I heard over and over again was how much people really liked um, the the, the mix of you know sort of uh, local the local service bringing yeah. over bring the whole Bluemix cloud local and then having it uh, you know in the cloud in the public cloud as well how much do you guys find that people are starting to realize this idea of there's undifferentiated sort of heavy lifting that that people like IBM can help them with and they can focus on applications versus before having to think about I got to figure all this stuff out I got to run it I got to sure. are you seeing that more and more uh, from your clients going I got to focus on the application I got to focus on the business side of things yeah absolutely especially if you talk to the right people with in those organizations, sure. um, but I, but I do think you know this idea that uh, mixed environments or hybrid state is really the reality that people are going to face. Yeah. That's not some temporary or transitory state. That they need the flexibility to run some things in multi-tenant public and some things on-prem, um, and that running you know running a cloud, running OpenStack, running Cloud Foundry or containers, like running a platform, is a fundamentally more complex operation than running. Uh, a Linux server, an app server, yeah. and and you really think about it like kind of the blast radius for failure is much bigger. You know, if you do that wrong and you have a thousand apps running on your platform and you screw something up, you take a thousand apps down, right? Yeah. And so I think you know we've run into a lot of clients who kind of started their journey in, in on-premise cloud space, trying to do it themselves and build it themselves, and they quickly realize that, that that's an expensive and complicated operation. Yeah. And so they want a vendor like an IBM to be able to help come in and kind of run that for them. That's why if you look at our local strategy, um, all of our kind of local cloud <laughs> offerings are uh, essentially managed. They, we use this technology called Relay to let us kind of reach in and connect to and manage that environment. So it's still delivered as a service. You know, to me, cloud is a service that you yeah. deliver. It's not software. And so, even in an on-prem case, you need that kind of capability. Yeah. You know, to, to the point that you raised, though, when things uh, do go wrong, right? When, when, when something happens and, and uh, um, maybe that creates a concern for potential clients or prospective clients or existing clients who are looking at, at making a similar move and they're like, well, wait a minute, I don't know, you know what happened here. Um, you have some proof in the pudding. You talk about interoperability and some case yeah. studies and some examples. I mean, how do you, how do you make me feel better uh, yeah. about taking that plunge uh, that um, maybe our guys you know, back in IT are kind of scratching their chins a little bit and saying, I'm not so sure, Jason. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of it I think is just about uh, transparency. I mean, part of the value of the whole community process is that you know, all, of the, all of the experiences, all of the testing, all of those case studies are things that you can share publicly. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is conversations with clients about here's what other people have done, here's the tests we've run. You know, this week we made this, uh, we made this uh, request to the other vendors within the OpenStack community to really get serious about doing interop testing, right? And you know, to me, one of the big values of open source and these communities is freedom of action and freedom of movement for clients. That they uh, they're not locked into a vendor. They they are kind of they are selecting a technology that's owned by a community, and they have the freedom to move things around. And and that value doesn't really play out unless there is actual true interoperability that everyone's implementations work the same. And the best way to make that happen is actually prove it to get together to do that testing and to publicly and transparently share the results. And and I think OpenStack's made a lot of strides recently with projects like RefStack to try to start to define, you know, within this incredibly flexible world that is OpenStack, where you can plug in all kinds of drivers and different configurations. You know, what's a configuration that we can all rely on and have consistent behavior? I think we have to go beyond that now and kind of do proof, right? Get together and prove it by actually testing and sharing those results. And who are the new clients? Uh, I mean, I've heard a lot about retailing this week and financing, whatever. Um, are you seeing expansion into those areas or maybe some other areas and verticals that you hadn't been into before that is starting to draw some interest in, with regard to open source and open source? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, cloud is fundamentally a horizontal technology, so um, on the whole, it doesn't tend to play into one industry or another. But of course, rates of adoption are different. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, we're certainly seeing adoption across all industries that we play in, in retail and financial services and manufacturing um, across the board. I have seen a shift, you know, for example, in financial services in the last maybe 12 months. I think there's been a big shift in mentality towards uh, a greater acceptance of public cloud and multi-tenant uh, or shared public cloud environments where maybe a year ago I'd walk into that client and they'd be like, we're never going to run outside our firewall. Um, today they recognize they're going to do that and therefore the value of something like OpenStack where I can have the same infrastructure and the same API inside my data center and out is a big value for them because they're going to have a mix. Right? Yeah. So you've seen shifts like that. You, you mentioned interoperability. You were, you know, we were talking about it from the perspective of you know, get Mirantis and HPE and IBM to you know, the vendors to work together. Right. The, the, the customers, every customer we talk to goes, yes, I recognize it's a hybrid world. I'd like to be able to move around. And then you step back for a second and you go, you've never had to worry about that before. right? You had your network, your environment. How do you, the, the challenge to me is, I mean, there's obviously an interoperability within, say, OpenStack, but you've got, Technologies like Docker or containers yeah. saying, hey, we're going to make you portable. You've got technology like Cloud Foundry, we're going to make you portable. How do you help customers understand what that portability, interoperability thing means from their perspective, which is, you know, I, I'd like flexibility. I don't right. really care about the bits, I want flexibility. Yeah, no, it's a great point that I think if you look, uh, you know, more deeply at the full cloud stack, yeah. there are different technologies within those layers, and some are better. You know, containers, I think, are a better model for packaging applications in a portable way. But what you quickly find is you take that, that kind of packaged application and below it, it connects to the network. It connects into storage. And those things have to be made portable as well. Right. And I think um, in kind of the compute space, you have virtual machines that you could get through Nova and OpenStack. You have containers. You have a bunch of options. Right. But when it comes to networking and it comes to storage, you know, OpenStack is really the most mature definition of how to expose those capabilities in a way that's flexible across different environments. And right. so what we've done is, and what my focus recently a lot has been, is how do we actually get these communities to come together? I was at the Linux Collaboration Summit last month in Tahoe, where, and I did a, a discussion there specifically on this. Like, we have all these great projects. They all um, overlap on some levels. That's fine, except for when you really start to think about how do I pull this whole thing together and get a consistent experience across the whole stack. So what we've tried to do for clients is, is uh, define the whole stack for them, you know, here's all the components, bring them together, and then be able to be prescriptive about, okay, if you need to build a portable app, use containers, use networking in this way, you know, give them some guidance on you know, how to optimize for that portability. Yeah. Right. So uh, this week's all about OpenStack. OpenStack's great, but at, at the end of the day, it's sort of low-level plumbing, right? It's like mm -hmm. you said, it exposes disks and networks and stuff. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, the other end of the spectrum is Watson, right? Yeah. You, you, you were in a, we were talking earlier, you were in a commercial around the masters about yep. Watson. Yep. Hey, give us a great example of somebody using Watson to do stuff that you just go, wow, that blew my mind. I mean, there's, there's just so many incredible stories around Watson. I mean, I, the thing I actually think is most interesting is, you know, there's the big use cases, but what's really interesting to me about Watson is how easy it is for an average developer to get access to just incredibly powerful capabilities. I mean, I think about, as I was kind of growing up as an engineer, if I wanted to do, you know, video image processing or, or natural language processing, I mean, that, that was a deep scientific space that would have been very hard for me to get my hands on. And now you can come into a platform like Bluemix and you can get Watson APIs, and in two minutes you can build an incredible app. I did a, I did a presentation back at Interconnect for this thing called Hack Summit, which is a virtual conference online, and, and I, I, uh, me and my team built an app that did like live um, sentiment analysis, tone analysis on the whole Twitter stream for the conference, right? And it took like a couple of days to hack together this you know, fairly complex natural language processing app off yeah. of Watson APIs. So I think, you know, to me, the really interesting story about Watson is just it, we've made it so accessible that the ideas that people come up with are pretty endless. Right, and, that's, and that part's fun, right? It's, it's uh, down here in the trenches in OpenStack, make sure it works, make sure yeah. it's highly available, and then let the creativity go crazy with the developers. That's, yeah, a, and that's I think, a cool contrast. I think in OpenStack, you, you can't lose sight of that. I mean, at the right. end of the day, all of these things are about providing a platform to run apps, and the right. apps are the driver. Right, and this is how do we support the creation of those applications. Well, tell us about the spot, though. I mean, for those at home who perhaps are watching in their office and they haven't, maybe they weren't watching the Masters, or they remember Jordan Spieth's big meltdown yeah. on Sunday and, <laughs> and not the spot. Tell us about the, the creation of that and your role in that and the, the fun you had with it. Yeah, you know, um, uh, IBM uh, does some pretty amazing things on the, on the advertising side, and 
And uh, you know, as a sponsor of the Masters, we put together a whole series of spots around Watson and Cloud. And, and I just happened to get the opportunity to participate in one of those. And, and uh, you, th you know, I always think those things take forever. And in this case, it was like the, the Masters was on Friday and Wednesday. I'm in New York, you know, recording voiceover for this uh, for this spot, talking about what we're doing around uh, data and cloud. And you know, they somehow hacked that together pretty quickly and get it online. So, did you ever see yourself? Did you have you ever thought about? Yeah, you know that I would appear in a, a spot no, I, uh, promoting. I, I, I mean, you know, it's funny. It's I, I talk to my my friends at work about that a lot. Like when I was an engineer back in college and taking classes on algorithms and data structures, what I really needed was like psychology and public speaking and <laughs> acting. Those would have been much more useful skills for me than. Well, I think you television. put it all together in a pretty nice way. Uh, Jason, thanks for being with us. And congratulations yeah. on the spot, but but Great. more importantly, congratulations to your work in the open source community. Great. Obviously, yeah. IBM's in there full speed ahead. Yeah, thank you. That's right, great. You Jason McGee from IBM. We'll be back with more from the Austin Convention Center with our coverage of OpenStack Summit 2016 right here on theCUBE.